All right, with the uh, storms that come through last night, we're knocked out of the field today, but that's just fine because uh, we're way behind on our shop work. And hopefully my goal today is going to be get this sucker finished up and maybe not out of here, but at least finished up to where we can pull it out. And right now it's in about a million different pieces. And the reason we had to stop work on it was we had field work to do. And then two, there was a mix up with our uh, disc opener blades that we ordered. Hopefully those will be showing up at some point today, but, but let me show you exactly what's going on, what our plan for this uh, planter was and their disc openers. All right, right here on the uh, front of the line, we got the original Kinsey uh, disc opener that came off the front unit. Now, our front units are only used to plant soybeans, so they don't go over uh, near as many acres as what my rear units do, which plant all crops. But anyway, uh, measuring the diameter from the factory, these are coming at 15 inches, and when they reach 14 and a half inches, they're considered wore out, so... If you look right there, we're just a hair over 14 and a half inches in diameter. So these front ones are ready to be replaced after, I think I run them four years. And then next in line, we got the one off the rear. We replaced these last year with factory Kinsey. And after one year running about 2000 acres because we had to replant a lot of our cotton, uh, they're about 14.8 inches so they got quite a bit less so our plan is is uh, we're going to take the ones off the rear and put them on the front and what we're going to do with the rear uh, we got two different options here we're supposed to have a third one right here but it hadn't showed up yet but i'll tell you what we're going to do anyway we've got another factory uh, kinsey disc opener and then we've got a wear parts llc Selsen disc opener, and then we're going to have another Wear Parts LLC Forged New uh, disc opener. And late last summer, uh, Eric of Wear Parts stopped by our shop and uh, showing us uh, their products and stuff and wanted us to actually do a trial with our planner. What we're going to do is uh, the all the back rows that we're going to replace, we're going to do six rows with our Selsen disc openers. We're going to do one row with the factory Kinsey disc opener and then five rows we're going to do with their forged to new uh, disc openers. And anyway, these disc openers are supposed to be better than factory OEM. For one thing, they're a lot more precise in placing this bearing. If you can see this bearing, there's a little bit of a gap around there and you know, these holes are not going to be uh, for the rivets are not going to be, you know, there's going to be some wobble and when they're manufactured at the factory, this bearing might not be completely perfectly center, which will allow this disc to kind of wobble a little bit as it rotates and can affect seed placement and accurate seed depth a little bit. Now on our factory one, we'll test here. I got my torch tip r right here and uh, we're going to try and stick it in this gap. So it goes in real easy right there. No, no problem at all sticking it in that crack. But then to go over here on this side, it will not go in the crack. So this bearing right here is not perfectly center of this hole and can allow this disc to wobble as it rotates, affecting seed depth. Now going over here to their Selsen blade, I mean, it looks like the gap is pretty much even all the way around. All right, it goes down in that crack. I can feel just a little bit of resistance there. A little bit of resistance there. A little, a little bit of resistance there. And a little bit of resistance there. So all four corners there, it's pretty much, that bearing is pretty much dead center. So it should be, uh, there should be no wobble in this disc at all. And then not only that, their bearing housings here are more precisely uh, stamped and machined 
to uh, offer a more secure fit of this bearing over a greater part of the outer race because one thing I've noticed past years with these factory op openers is that sometimes your bearing will still good but you can feel that a little bit of slack is that bearing where it's kind of wiggling back and forth in the housing and because it just doesn't have near as much surface contact with it with the outer race so these are supposed to be a lot more precise supposed to hold the bearing a lot more stable and we're talking about planting just little bitty details like this can make a big difference in how successful your planting is the big thing that we're going to test on these blades is the wear life uh, these uh, uh, Selsun blades from wear parts are supposedly uh, heat treated better than what the factory ones are. And the Selsun blades, they claim to get about 10 to 20% more wear life than the factory ones. Now the Forge and New ones, when we get those in, those are heat treated, I think they said three different times. And they're claiming like uh, 20 to 40% longer wear life with those. Now, what's the price on these? Because, uh, you know, if you pay a lot more for the blade, you know, money-wise, it might not make any difference. Well, these factory Kinsey ones shocked me. I thought they used to be somewhere $30, $35 per blade. These that we just picked up at the uh, factory Kinsey store were $50 per blade, which surprised me. Let me look at my phone and make sure I get these, uh, get these facts right. All right, this Selsun blade... Uh, they sell it for a hair over $38 per blade. And then the Forge and New, which is supposed to be their longest lasting one, they sell for almost $53 per blade. And then I looked, uh, I look, and then I looked on shoeparts.com because uh, a lot of, we buy a lot of parts from Shoe, especially planter parts. And anyway, their blades range from $28 to $40 per blade, just depending on, I think the thickness and the hardness that you get from from shoot so these are definitely if they last any amount of, bit longer than the kinsey ones or heck this one the selson if it lasts as long as the kinsey one uh it will definitely be a far better value for your money and if the forge and new last lo longer a little bit longer than the factory kinsey one definitely be worth worth your money so like i said Six rows are going to be Selsun blades. We're going to have our control in the middle on one row with a factory OEM and then forcing you on the others. And then every year when we bring our planter through the shop, we're going to measure the, uh, measure the wear on the disc and see if we're actually getting longer life out of these uh, wear part LLC uh, disc openers. But right now we got, we got all our Selsun blades in. That's what they did. They shipped me all Selsun blades, whereas half of them were supposed to be forged and used. So we're waiting on the forged and new ones to show up. But we can go ahead and put the Selsun blades on six rows. We can put the factory uh, Kinsey one on one row. And then the other five rows we can do whenever, the, whenever, whenever they show up. So Andy, you ready, ready to get this thing put back together and ready to at least move out of the shop? Yeah, I'm ready. It, it was our easy project for a little while. Now we've been in. Yeah, we we've been waiting on those new those disc openers for a week, but uh, I think we got enough this morning to keep us busy until until they show up. So, so we'll we'll start out by the, putting the Selsun blades uh, these on these uh, six rows right here, and then we're going to do one row with the factory Kinsey that we got got over here, and then when the others show up, we can do the remain remaining five rows. So, and then on the on the fronts, all the all the ones we took off of the back sir. yeah all the ones we took off the rear are going on the front and we should have two disc openers left over so uh think everything else is on this planner is done and we're ready to start going back with parts and we'll see how that turns out and bring you back when we got something to show you and got something else i want to show you finally got something in after it's been like three weeks finally got it back Hey, we finally got our seat back for the loader tractor. I told you I was going to try and go back with leather rather than cloth. It kind of looks like leather. Uh, no, it's not not leather. It is a marine. It is marine grade vinyl. But I mean, it's got a real nice feel to it. This this isn't the vinyl of your uh, 1970s uh, pickup truck seats. This is some uh, pretty nice feeling stuff, and they did a good job of. Uh, you know, stitching it up and making it look good. Wish it'd be just a, a little bit tighter right through there. But overall, I'm pretty tickled with it. It's going to give that loader tractor a, a luxurious feel there in the cab. 
uh, got that done, got the buddy seat done, and now we can finally get these back in the tractor because we just been uh, riding around sitting on the, the air spring platform for the last last couple weeks as we've been having to use it a little bit here and there. So uh, for $450, I think that's a pretty good upgrade. I was surprised, uh, I thought it'd be, be more expensive than that, but $450 to do that and the buddy seat, not bad at all. Glad we'll, I'm glad we did it. All right, Andy's uh, gotten a few sets of these wear blades on and now we got to get them adjusted correctly. Uh, the book says, put two business cards in. Well, I don't have business cards, so I use emery cloth. It's about the same thickness. And you want about a inch to inch and a quarter of <coughs> blade contact. I never have been real happy with that because uh, it just seems like it's just a little too loose. And if you look in the seed trench, sometimes you can kind of see a W in there where you got a little ridge of soil right it's in the middle of the seed, the seed trench, which can uh, which can affect depth. So I prefer to adjust mine a little bit tighter, especially considering these are brand new and uh, they got paint on them. And once the paint wears off, they're not going to be as tight. So right now, these are adjusted correctly according to the book, but my preference is is to have them tighter. I think it does a better job. So Andy, like on these, I mean, you got them real close. We'll probably need to take one shim off one side on, on one blade and move it to the outside to get one blade in just a hair closer. Even if it won't be completely dead center on that scraper, I, I think it'll do a little bit better job. Huh? Especially when the, when the paint comes off. Yeah, it'll squeeze them together. Yeah. All right, the UPS man just showed up with uh, new disc openers and I, I was about to have a fit because <laughs> looking right here, these have got the same part number as the original Chelsea ones and you know we're wanting the we're wanting the forge to know ones that, that are harder. So I called him up and he asked me about the very end. You see how this one's got a pound symbol after the end? So that means it's got the, it's the Forge to the, the know ones, whereas the uh, Chelson ones have the same part number, but they have a backwards parenthesis. So anyway, these are the Forge to know ones. There's no other way to uh, tell the difference. Well, yeah, yeah, there is. I don't know if you can catch that in the light, but it says no uh, 200 made in France. So yeah, these are definitely the uh, the harder uh, heat uh, heat treated three times. These six units have got the uh, harder than stock Chelson blades, which should last 10 to 20 percent longer. Row number seven, we've got the uh, factory Kinsey ones stamped with Kinsey. And then these other five on this side are going to be the four snow ones. So uh, come in next year and the year after that, we're going to take them off, measure them, and see if the wear difference is any, and see or, and actually see what the wear difference is between the three different types of blades and see if these wear part ones last any longer. Now we already know they're going to be more accurate in seed placement because we've already tested the the, the centerness of the of the bearing housing on there, and the wear parts ones are definitely better than what the factory Kinseys are. Yes, we're going with all new blades on the back, and then the old ones off the back are going on the front. Right. Okay. okay. So I want to make sure the box is in the right spot. And then looking at this uh, last one that uh, Andy put on the Kinsey one, he's got it adjusted. I mean, pretty much. Uh, perfectly we've got about uh, two and a half to three inches of blade touching right here but you can hold one and you can still slip it it's a little tougher than what the book recommends on being able to uh, slip but like i said these have got a fairly thick layer of paint on them and once that paint wears off which won't take just an acre uh these should be the uh these should be adjusted perfectly the main thing is you know we we don't want any gap right up here on the leading edge whatsoever to kind of leave that W in the seed trench. We want a true V uh, seed trench, especially on corn. It is absolutely critical on corn to get the depth consistent seed to seed. And I believe we've got these adjusted pretty much perfectly. And then on these that Andy installed this morning, he's gone ahead and gotten the uh, gauge wheel uh, already mounted on and do you, th do you think you got them shimmed properly or are they gonna need a little work? I think most of them are pretty pretty accurate where they just left off. I mean, it's just barely, barely rubbing right there. All right, so when you lift it up. Uh, got a little bit of... Hold on, lift, lift, lift it up again, see if I can catch you on camera. 
I can see there on the very front side, I mean, it's just barely rubbing the, rubbing the disc. We want them rubbing the disc to keep uh, dirt from falling into the seed trench, but you don't want them rubbing too tight, otherwise you'll wear, wear your tire out, so. Yeah. Yeah. And the, other, the other thing to look at is to, uh, when you tighten up this bolt right here, Andy, make sure, I mean, that washer is, make sure there's no, no slack in there, otherwise we might have to stuff another shim back there. Yeah, like that one, we need to try and get one more shim back there. Otherwise, that's going to allow that to walk back off, and then we're, you know, it's not going to be touching like it should. Be hunting another gauge wheel. Yeah, like this one right here, you got this one adjusted absolutely perfectly. I mean, it's it's rubbing lightly, but not too much. It drops down. Yeah. Okay. Then some of these, you know, the wheel's going to be slightly warped, and it's going to be hard to get it just perfect, but... You got them looking good so far. Uh, don't even. No, I'm not doing that. Uh. All right, Carter, Carter show, show me what you did on the 4440 today. What were you working on later this morning? What, what do we got here? Chrome stack. We got a chrome stack? Yeah. All right, I know everybody's going to say, well, you got it aimed the wrong way. Well, the reason we got it aimed that way, I'd like to aim it front, but we do all our bush hogging with this tractor and limbs and vines. If you got that uh, elbow aim forward, uh, that's gonna act like a hook and gonna bend that back. So we kinda owned, uh, we kinda pointed off to the side and back just a hair, so any limbs or vines that encounter should just be able to slide off the top of it. So it's more about function rather than looks. Everybody wants to hear it, Carter. Everybody wants to hear the, hear the, hear the straight pipe. Why don't you test it out for them, show them what it looks, sounds like. Yeah, our, uh, our stop cable broke uh, earlier today, so got to get one of them ordered. Not quite done with this tractor yet. So what do you think, Carter? Do you approve? Yeah, it's all right. almost got it done today not quite uh we, we were going to get it done today but then uh i was going through adjusting these gauge wheels and i had to bolt the whole gauge wheel on snap off and then carter put all the closing wheels on wrong <laughs> well, i didn't put all of them on wrong just a, almost almost half of them just half of them <laughs> that's like out of 12 i think eight were wrong <laughs> teaching a teenager mechanic work is frustrating 
There is no caring or attention to detail. But anyway, we uh, all we got left to do is just uh, these last few units on the front uh, go through and adjust those gauge wheels, and then technically we would be done. Just put the hoppers back on. Oh, we got oh uh, Kelly went and got the cable. We got to replace the cable that goes uh, from here all the way down the down the tongue. But I think before we put the units on, we're going to go through and. Uh, put uh, try out some plates in these meters and uh, make sure they got four years of wear. It might be time to to shim up those plates on the unit. So we need to do the corn first because that's the first things that are going to go in. No, might might be soybeans. I don't know. Anyway, it'll probably be a few days before we get back on this uh, planter. We got some field work to do early next week, but uh, as soon as we can, we're gonna get this thing wrapped up. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you in the next one.